Cobra is back with new King Forge Tech irons in 2022. In this episode of the String Report, Thomas and myself will do some testing and tell you everything you need to know about these explosive irons. Hey golfers, Thomas and Drew back here on the driving range at Les Bolstead Golf Course with new irons for 2022 from Cobra. The Forge Tech and Forge Tech X irons, Thomas. Uh, very excited about those because, you know, the Forge Tech line, there's been, what, last uh, every two years probably, the past several years, Cobra has released Forge Tech irons. And now the Forge Tech X is a new kind of addition to it as well. So uh, talk to me about what you see initially from these two models. Yeah, so first looking at the Forge Tech iron, looks a little sleek, sleeker mm -hmm. compared to the previous model. Yep. So it looks like a, you know, maybe a little bit less offset, a little bit sleeker, and almost kind of looks like a player's iron. Yeah. It looks, looks great. Um, Forge Tech X is a little bit larger. I'm seeing a little bit more, it seems like more weight kind of pushed back a little bit on this club. Um, I know the loft is a couple of degrees stronger, I believe 27 degrees of loft mm -hmm. on the Forge Tech X, 29 and a half on the Forge Tech. So I would expect the Forge Tech X to be pretty explosive. For sure, and they are. I mean, that, that power shell face that Cobra irons have had over the past few years has been very explosive. You've seen that in the fitting bays as well, that those distance numbers could really climb. Also, each has that hollow body design to really provide that extra pop as well. Um, but what I think is different about the two, and so you get that different amount of tungsten weighting, and that's where you see the difference between the Forge Tech X, which is gonna be the more forgiving model, and the Forge Tech, uh, which is gonna be more of kind of a player's oriented model. So the Forge Tech X has 65 grams of tungsten weight, primarily heel and toe to provide that stability and then also increase that launch uh, for those players that maybe need help with that. Whereas it's only 20 grams in the Forge Tech. So again, a little bit more oriented towards workability and uh, maybe chasing a lower ball flight there with that one. Yeah, it comes down to where you put the weight, more weight's gonna create more stability. Mm -hmm. So more straighter shots with the Forge Tech X. Um, 20 grams is not, is not as much as 65, so you're able to then work that club face a little bit easier. As I mentioned, the Forge Tech looks a little bit more like a sleeker player's iron. Mm -hmm. Yep, and then you also get kind of better feel maybe too um, with that lower amount of tungsten weighting in that Forge Tech with that forged 1025 carbon steel body too as well. So uh, there's a lot to like about these irons, Thomas. Uh, and so kind of talk to me about the testing portion today, what we'll do here. I know we're going to hit some shots and then kind of come back and review some of that data, but I know you also want to maybe compare to your gamer. Yeah, I mean, I always like putting my gamer in there. Just I'm always intrigued with loft. You know, my seven iron's got 34 degrees of loft on it. It's kind of that standard industry. Over time, I guess yeah. the lofts get a little bit stronger. <laughs> but you just, you know, talking about 27 to 34, that's seven degrees. Mm -hmm. So we're going to talk about the differences and why a player would want the Forge Tech X or the Forge Tech. Mm -hmm. Or maybe why a golfer would maybe need a little bit more loft on the club. And it's going to come down to spin and the height and how much speed they can create. Sure. Well, we've got the track pin out here. We're ready to go. And let's hit some shots. All right. It's about as good as I can hit that club. Well, sounded good. I mean, even that one, I left the face a little bit open on, but the ball flew a lot further than my my. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it did. How about uh, how did it look, and how was the feel on that one? Yeah, so looking down at it, uh, the top line just a little bit larger than what you know my clubs are almost right. blades. Looking down at it, so a little bit larger, a little bit larger here to toe. It it fits into that player's distance iron category yeah, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, felt pretty good. I mean. It definitely felt more explosive. I knew as soon as I hit it, the ball was going oh, further. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I mean, it didn't feel like it's gamey either. Yeah. I mean, it, it still felt like it was pretty forged off the face. Yeah. That felt like a good swing. Yep. That seems more representative of what I would feel like I would hit this club. Yeah. Well, that last shot, Thomas, you said it felt like the best swing probably of the five. Yep. Carry 197 total 205, and it was within a yard of that center line there. So, so let's look at these averages here. You dropped and spin about 1,400 RPM. Uh, you gained about 17 yards of carry, 20 yards total. And uh, I mean, you were swinging a little bit faster. I think you mentioned it maybe felt a little bit lighter. So 
Um, that's probably a natural increase of speed there. Uh, and then look at the dispersion. I mean, everything, yeah, very clearly, you know, 15 yards further, 20 yards further. Yep. Um, a little bit larger dispersion than your gamer, but obviously hitting the ball further like that, it's going to create larger dispersion patterns. So, I don't know, I, think, I mean, I think it's, it performs really well and it sounds really good too, actually. It doesn't sound like it's clicky or anything either from my perspective. Right, not at all. I think the club speed, the head just feels a little bit heavier. I did my best job to try and match out my golf shaft is the Modus 120X. So it is five grams lighter, mm -hmm. it's part of it to okay. do it, but I think more so it's the head. The head just feels really light. Mm -hmm. Even the first couple of swings, I tried to kind of match my speed up with what I'm doing with my irons. Yeah. I even tried to slow it down to match it, but just you'll notice that, yeah, it, a lighter club head is going to generate a little bit more club speed. So that's why I'd revert back to that smash factor number. Mm -hmm. So we know that efficiency number is a good way to talk about the differences in say a 34 degree seven iron and a 29 and a half degree right. seven iron. Right, and so your smash went from 140 to 142. It's so okay. 142 with the gamer. So you increased your yep. efficiency, a lot of that due to the loft there, I imagine, uh, hitting a stronger lofted club. And then we can also talk about things like uh, launch angle. So launch angle went down 1.3 degrees and the dynamic loft also went down from 22.9 to 20.3. So yep. just showing less lofted impact, I mean, that's gonna happen right. with a lower lofted club. But uh, curious now on the next club here, also for what it's worth, you averaged zero feet of curve with the Forge Tech. You had a couple <laughs> went right, a couple went left, yep. but averaged zero, which is kind of fun. Uh, but Forge Tech X now, what do you expect to see difference uh, or a difference between you know Forge Tech, Forge Tech X, now that um, you've hit this one? Well, I'm curious to see the bull flight because I know 27 degrees a lot versus 29 and a half is naturally, it should go further, it should spin a little bit less yet. Yep. So we talked about 1400 RPMs less than my seven iron, maybe another 500 yeah. RPMs less. Which would get even, would probably get a little dangerous there for yeah. you anyway. Right, so it's going to depend on the player's attack angle, where they need yeah. to reduce spin or their, you know, what height they're hitting the club at. Sure. If they're not hitting it high enough, it's going to come in pretty low to the green. Right. So let's, uh, let's see what it does here and see if what the stopping power is like. Okay. Definitely a clickier type of sound to that one. Yeah, definitely a little louder. Second. How about the feel on that one? Yeah, it, it felt harsher on the hands. Yeah. Not, not terrible, but it definitely you know, didn't feel like it was as forged feeling on mm -hmm. the face. Sure. Wow. It's a little bit further right there. This club flies straight. That, uh, yeah, this dispersion's kind of a joke, actually. Yeah. Uh, here, you know what? Take a look for yourself. <laughs> That's yep. the last one. You had those four right next to each other yeah. to start with. And uh, let's just look at these numbers really quick, and then we'll kind of go into some final thoughts here. Um, our club speed average 93.1 there, so still a little bit faster yet. Um, but regardless, you generated another 12 yards of carry. So you're actually carrying the ball on average 204.2 with a seven iron there, which I know isn't for you what you need, but the player that comes down really steep or the player that doesn't maybe swing super fast could really benefit from a club like that that can really launch that ball out there. And then we also saw that thing still, you know, the concern with like loft jacking and things like that is that it doesn't quite get high enough. That was the highest height for a shot that you got today. And the launch also kept, you know, was really consistent there. Launch angle is actually higher than the forge tech by 0.2 degrees, so. There we go. Comes down to the tungsten placement. Yeah. It's going to help get the ball Low. up in the air, mm -hmm. lower, um, forgiving, for yep. basically straight. I can believe how straight right. that club was. Right. I mean, you had, let's, I'm actually going to look at this because your ball, yeah, you never curved the ball more than 20 feet with any of those five shots. We're talking about shots that were hit at 210 plus in distance and they never curved more than 20 feet. You had, your first two shots were four and two feet, by the way. Then it was 13, 16, 19. Yeah. So that's pretty good. You're hitting the, the club is designed to hit the ball straight and far. I mean, that's it's pretty simple. That's where a lot of clubs in that category are. But mm -hmm. we saw the results in this test. That's pretty uh, clear cut. Yeah, and I was swinging about half an hour miles an hour faster than the Forge Tech, but I picked up 12 yards. So I mean, the ball speed, the efficiency number, I mean, that had to be a lot higher than the Forge Tech, right? Right. I mean, the efficiency was actually 145. 145. Ball speed was another four miles an hour. Right. Well, Thomas, I think we completed some very successful testing here, and we, you know, we, I think we had some kind of hopes for what these irons would show in the testing. I think they delivered. Uh, you know, the Cobra King Forge Tech 
really, I mean, a premier player's distance iron, really. It has the, the feel that you're looking for, also the distance, and I mean, it's, it's not gonna fly offline a ton either. And the Forge Tech X was everything you need really in a game improvement iron, but it still has a really good look for right. being in that category. So you get a lot of, of capabilities with one iron model, or I guess some of these, both, both these models here. Yeah, I mean, the, the Tech X, it's kind of a unique club because, you know, you, you compare it to other game improvement irons. I mean, Cobra have their own. I mean, they've got their LTD X iron, which, you know, is just a touch stronger yet, mm -hmm. but it looks a little bit more like a game improvement iron. Yeah. This doesn't really look as much as a game improvement look, iron down, looking down. Right. And it kind of almost falls into, I would say this is very, very close to like your, your Callaway Apex DCB, mm -hmm. but sure. with just a little bit less loft on it. Sure. Yeah. Sure. And so, you know, one of the things we always touch on in these swing report videos, we want to categorize the clubs as to, you know, what type of golfers they fit best. And so we'll start with the Forge Tech. Um, I know you've mentioned player's distance iron. You've mentioned a few different elements to describe that player, but give me the type of player that would best fit uh, into the Forge Tech iron. Yeah, I mean, it's a player that's looking to pick up a little bit of distance, reduce spin a little bit, um, still be able to work the ball both ways though. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's, I mean, you can still work the ball with this club, with the Forge Tech X, but it's, it's just a little bit easier when you don't have all that tungsten weight kind of pushed down the bottom. Sure, and then the Forge Tech X, a little bit more game improvement iron, so I imagine players maybe not quite as skilled or maybe don't swing as fast. Right, yeah, I mean, it's kind of funny because I was thinking in my head, you know, I could play this in the top of my bag. Oh, okay. Uh, I mean, that dispersion says it all. I, yeah, I felt really. really comfortable first two swings. I was feeling really confident with it. I don't need to hit it 204 yards carry with my seven no. with my seven iron. Um, all I'm saying is it felt really good. Surprising, kind of kind of under very underrated. straight too. Very very straight. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, very 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 good golf club. I like it a lot. I mean, if you if you need a little bit of help, but you say you don't want to go to a max game improvement iron look, I think this is your winner. For sure, yeah. for sure. Well, Thomas, thanks for doing the testing today. Uh, we actually got some range ops coming down now, so we got to wrap up here. But uh, golfers, if you're interested in the Cobra Forge Tech or Forge Tech X irons, you know what to do. You can visit secondswing.com or you can schedule a fitting online uh, or talk to one of our store members, our store team members, excuse me, and they'll help you get set up with Cobra King Forge Tech or Forge Tech X irons. Thomas, thanks again. Not a problem.